Hi friends, in today's video, I'm gonna do a complete tutorial on my eight in one unit session that I purchased from my Chai Wei. I purchased this machine about two and a half years ago and it still works really great. And in fact, you can still purchase this machine today because it's such a great machine, they still carry it. I get a lot of requests to do an updated tutorial on this machine. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to go over this machine and show you exactly how I operate it, show you exactly how I use it. I'm not gonna do a treatment, but I am gonna do a complete tutorial on this, the operation of this machine. If this has sparked your interest, I'm Joan Johnson, and this is Beauty Over 50 on a Budget, where I do body sculpting, body contouring, and sprinkle in a little bit of anti-aging and skincare. Please consider subscribing to my channel. With this machine, you're usually not going to get any instructions. You're not going to get a user manual or anything when you purchase this machine. Unfortunately, they don't provide it. You can go online and download a PDF of a manual of this machine, and I will leave a link to it in the description box below so that you can actually have a manual of your own. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break down each handle in the order of operation and show you exactly how I use it. So first of all, the first thing I like to do is, of course, I use ultrasound gel anytime I do a treatment. This is the ultrasound gel that I like to use. I buy it in the big five liter containers and then I just transfer it into smaller bottles because it's easier to handle. You need a conductive medium whenever you do cavitation. Cavitation is ultrasound waves that penetrate through the skin and disrupt the fat cells and they burst. So with cavitation, unlike cryolipolysis, you're disrupting the fat cells and they're bursting. You're not actually killing them, but you're, you're blasting them. So it's really important that you drink a lot of water when you do any of these treatments. So the way I do my treatments are I go in order of operation of the screen. So the top one is cavitation. This is the cavitation handle on this machine. This is a 2.0 unisession 40K with a one megahertz radio frequency. What's really important to know about this machine is that it's a 2.0. When using this ultrasonic cavitation, it can create a loud high-pitched squeal in your inner ear, which can cause tendinitis. So if you're really sensitive to um, loud noises and high-pitched noises, you're not gonna wanna use a 2.0 model of cavitation. You're gonna wanna use a 2.5 or a 3.0 model of cavitation. So like I said, this machine is about two and a half years old. So this is a 2.0, so this is an older version. They have since updated the cavitation handles and created them to where they're not so loud in the inner ear. So that's really good. So when you're doing research on doing your cavitation, you need to really know your body and know if your, your ears are really sensitive to loud high-pitched squeals because this is gonna do it. This is gonna put a loud high-pitched squeal in your inner ear. So then, so when you're doing your treatments, you're always gonna go up and down, horizontal, and then in circular motions. So this handle, if depending on what area that I'm gonna do, if I was doing my arms, I would do my cavitation for about 10 minutes. If I was doing my abdomen, I would do it for 15 to 20 minutes. If I were doing my thighs, I would do it for 15 or 20 minutes per thigh. And then again, I would go up and down, horizontal, and then in circular motions, and then repeat for a total of 20 minutes if I was doing my abdomen. Okay, let me show you the settings on this machine for the cavitation handle. Okay, because we go in order of operation, it automatically defaults to the cavitation handle, which is this one. So you're gonna set your time, and like I said, if I was doing my abdomen, I would set it for 20 minutes, if I was doing my arms, I would set it for 10 minutes. So you can change the time to whatever you're gonna do your treatments for. And then your energy. Set your energy at whatever you're comfortable 
with. Always start out at a lower energy and work your way up until you get used to the machine. Mode A is a constant and mode B is a pulse. So for larger areas of fat, you're gonna to wanna to use it on mode A. For maintenance and smaller areas of fat, you're gonna to wanna to use it on mode B and then start. Okay, so we're going in order of operation. So the next item is the vacuum therapy. So this handle has radio frequency in the vacuum so you can actually kill two birds with one stone or you can do your vacuum by itself or your radio frequency by itself but i like to use the radio frequency with the vacuum and then i follow it up with another radio frequency treatment with the body pro so i get a lot of questions with regards to do i use oil do i use gel i use ultrasound gel when i'm doing my vacuum therapy and People get all freaked out about it because it's like, oh no, you're gonna you're gonna plug your machine, you're gonna plug your machine. I'm gonna show you exactly how I keep this from getting plugged, even though I'm using gel with my vacuum therapy. I believe that you get better results using gel when you're doing radio frequency skin tightening. Oil actually blocks the radio frequency. So if I'm gonna do vacuum therapy with radio frequency, I want my gel. I don't want the oil to block the radio frequency. I want the radio frequency skin tightening as well as the slip with the ultrasound gel with my vacuum. Now if I was just doing vacuum therapy without radio frequency and just wanting to use the vacuum therapy like for cupping or whatever, then yeah, I would use oil. But you use what you want to use and I'll use what I want to use and I'll just show you how I do it to keep it running well, to keep it clean and functioning. So a lot of people are scared of these machines and you should have a, a healthy respect for them, absolutely, because they can hurt you. But don't be so afraid to clean them. So this is a vacuum hose and there's a center piece in the middle right there with holes. And this is where you're gonna get the suction. So I'm just gonna turn it on so you guys can see And then this little silver knob controls the pressure of the suction. So when the vacuum works, it's gonna suck up and then it's gonna release, and then it's gonna suck up and then it's gonna release. This is gonna control that pressure for the when it sucks it up. So I'm just gonna turn it on. You guys can see it's sucked up to my arm, okay? And then you can see that it's sucking it up and releasing it. So that's how it works. And then when you put ultrasound gel on, it's gonna give it that slip so it'll so it'll glide all the way around your so it'll glide. So you need that slip for it to glide. Okay, so you're using ultrasound gel and you've gotten gel up in here. Don't panic, take a Q-tip and scoop it out. And then you should have gotten a bag of parts, extra parts when you purchased your machine. These little white discs are actually little filters. And what those are for, it's for your vacuum. So when you got your machine, you might've gotten a little Allen wrench and you might've gotten some of these little white discs and you should have gotten some gaskets and a replacement fuse. So you're using your vacuum and it's plugging up. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your little Allen wrench that they gave you when you purchased your machine, or I'm gonna use just this little screwdriver right here. And this little white piece comes out. So I'm just gonna take my little tiny screwdriver and pop it right in there See how that just popped right out? And my little filter just fell out. So if your vacuum is not sucking, your little filter is probably plugged. So see, just take your little bag of parts, put your little filter back in there. 
just like that. Make sure this is nice and clean. And just push it right back in with your finger, just like that. And it'll be all clean. So, so with that said, I wanna clean my hose. Maybe I got some gel up into my hose. Maybe it sucked through the filter and got into my hose. I'm gonna take a little squirt bottle not a lot, I'm not gonna dump a bunch of water in this. I'm gonna just take a little screw, a little bit of water in my water bottle. Here's the filter on the back of the machine, okay? This hose, this is the vacuum hose, and it's gonna discharge anything that this vacuum hose picked up into this filter. Now, if you're not getting anything in your filter, that's okay, because your little white disc filter might be catching everything. So that doesn't mean this that this is always going to have something in it. But if you're having problems with your suction and you cleaned your little disc and it's still not sucking the way you want it to suck, take your squirt bottle, turn it on, just a little bit of water into your hose. Hear it sucking it up? See it discharging it into this filter? Then I'm gonna raise my hose up and I'm gonna make sure all the water is drained. Then I'm gonna turn my machine off and I'm gonna pull my filter out. And there is the clean water. And you can see that my hose is clean because when I, when I clean my hose after I do my treatments, I always scoop it out with a Q-tip and then clean my filter. So you can see that my hose is clean. That's why I've never had it blocked or plugged. So then I would dump this out and rinse it out and I'm ready to go for the next time. You also have these little gaskets right here on here and you have gaskets right here on here you want to make sure that they're always in good working order that there's not any little tears in them because then you're going to lose suction and your vacuum is not going to work it has to have complete suction it has to have an airtight suction in order for it to work and again you got your spare parts when you purchase the machine. So that's what these little these little gaskets are for, is for this filter. Then you're gonna have a little fuse right here. So if your fuse ever goes out, this is where you replace your fuse. See that little diagram right there? That's a little picture of a fuse. You would just unscrew these two pieces and pop this out and replace your, your fuse right there. So if you're not getting the suction that you should be getting, you might have to replace your little gasket. And you can see right there that mine is a little bit warm. Because we go in order of operation, next is the vacuum handle. The radio frequency is not gonna come on unless it's at a one or above. So I wanna show you, see it's all set to zero so it's not even working. There's no suction. So you always want your suction greater than your release because it's gonna suck the area up and then it's gonna release it. Got my suction for a six and then my release for a three. But you can see that the radio frequency isn't on because it's only at a one. And, and anytime you use radio frequency, it has to be an, a one, above a one. So see how I turned it to a power of two and the radio frequency came on? Mode A is a constant. Mode B only comes on when it touches your skin. So that's the same with the vacuum therapy as well. Okay. Okay, next, in order of operation, you did your cavitation, then you did your vacuum therapy, and whether you did it with radio frequency skin tightening or not is up to you. Then you're gonna do your radio frequency skin tightening. So this is the body. I get a lot of comments um, with regards to radio frequency skin tightening and some people say mine's not working. 
If you don't have it on at least a two energy, it's not gonna come on. So it, so it just came on. So if I only have it on a one, on a, the power level of one, see, it doesn't come on. It has to be on a two or higher. Otherwise, it's not gonna come on. So with this, you have a mode A and you have a mode B. So A, there again, is a constant. B only comes on when it detects your skin. So it only comes on when it touches your skin. So, and you can see here on the screen that it, it, it like scrolls. So it only comes on when it touches your skin. And you can feel the heat right away when you're touched with cavitation, vacuum therapy, radio frequency. Then you can pick up with the face radio frequency over here for this, the three polar and then the four polar for the face over here. So these are all basically gonna operate the same way. A is for a constant, B only comes on when it touches your skin. So the next button is the cold hot hammer which is this one. This is so wonderful for doing, um, if you have puffy eyes, if you have allergies, and your eyes are tired, and they're just puffy, this feels so good. You can put a sheet mask on and run this over it after you do microneedling or any kind of facial, or even just an RF facial, you can run this over. This also has the hot feature as well. The button for that and then the energy. Mode A is for cold. Mode B is for hot. So depending on what treatment that you're doing, you can use the cold. Say you need to use it for hot for a sore muscle. You can put it on hot and run this for along that area if you have a sore muscle. I get so many requests on how to operate this handle. This is the LED light and microcurrent handle. So when you're doing microcurrent, you need to have an ultrasound gel on. So this has four different microcurrent settings. It has an A, B, C, and D. So with that said, you're gonna want to, to experiment with each setting to see how you're reacting to it. And there again, turn the energy up or down depending on how strong you're, you're gonna want to do your microcurrent. Then the microcurrent, you use the screen to control the microcurrent. If you only wanna use the LED light on this handle, then you, you use these controls on here. So they're com it's one handle, but it's controlled separately. So the microcurrent is controlled by the screen where the LED is controlled by the by the knobs on the back. So it has the off, the auto, the on mode, and then the wave. So with this, you just turn it on to on, and it automatically defaults to the green. Then if you wanted to change the colors, because it has all seven of the LED light colors, you just hit mode again, and it changes it to whatever color that you wanted to use, and it'll stay on that color. If you want it to, it to scroll through all seven of the colors, then you're just gonna push auto and it'll scroll through all seven of the colors. So you can actually do all seven of the colors in one treatment if you wanted to. Then if you wanted it to just do a wave of a single color off and on, then you would just hit wave on mode, pick whatever color that you wanted it to be on, and then wave and it flashes it back and forth off on that color, okay? And then off. I hope this video was helpful in explaining all the great features of this eight-in-one unisession and why I love it so much. It, I do wish some of the new machines had these two handles on them because these handles come in so handy to do all kinds of different treatments. If you purchase this machine, you can actually do your whole body with this machine. It's got the LED light, it's got the microcurrent, it's got the cold, hard, cold hot hammer, it's got the three radio frequency skin tightening handles, it's got the cavitation and the vacuum. 
So that's why I love this machine so much. If you found this video helpful, please let me know in the comments below. I always say, I always try to encourage my viewers, if you've purchased the machine, it's an investment and it can last you for years to come. Everything I use in this video has links in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Like and subscribe and leave a comment down below.